All right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at AWS reInvent, and I'm at the new 4J booth, uh, chatting with Zach. Uh, Zach, first of all, welcome to the Robert Show. It's Thank your you. debut, so I'm excited to chat. I'm excited to learn about all the cool things that you're doing at New 4J, about Python packages as well. Uh, but just for your audience, uh, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Tell us more about what you do at Neo4j. Yeah, sure. So I am a technical marketer at Neo4j. Nice. Um, and so that means I'm technically on the marketing team. <laughs> right. But basically what I do, I have a data science and machine learning background, and I help connect the dots between what engineering is building and our product roadmap and how we talk about that to developers and to the rest of the general audience. That's awesome, and uh, I recently you know, also saw uh, one of the things, uh, you know, and I've been talking a lot about GraphRag recently too with my audience, so I was kind of intrigued to see GraphRag Python package. Uh, I'm kind of uh, wanting to learn a little about that and I'm pretty sure the audience would benefit a lot. So would you like to share about the GraphRag Python package? Yeah, sure, so we know that as AI is getting more advanced. Right. People are starting to use agents. Mm -hmm. They're starting to think about how do I combine different RAG workflows. And to do this, it really helps to have more than just a bunch of documents with a vector index on them. Very true. It helps to have different entities defined. You can imagine if you're working on like a legal case with commercial contracts, there's organizations, there's contract clauses. If you're working on something in financial services, there's yep. managers, there's yep. banks, there's all these different entities. So we know that we need some sort of data structure, right, to back our AI and make that accessible to our AI so they can Very answer important. these questions in these workflows. But doing that can sometimes be challenging. There's True. some friction there, because it's not as easy as just saying, I'm going to just chunk my documents up and put a vector index on them. Yeah. So the purpose of the GraphRag package is to make the end-to-end -end process from creating the entities you need, to designing the retrievers, to then putting that into a system where you can talk to an AI mm -hmm. as easy as possible for developers, starting in Python right now. Yeah, and what were the challenges that you were seeing before you know, the Python package? What, what made you all uh, think about this? Well, I think it comes down to those challenges of how do you actually build the data structure that you need for yes. a reasonably sophisticated, not stupid AI system to work. Right. What you're seeing behind us is, is an example of our Knowledge Graph Builder. Yeah. And we came out with that much earlier um, in the year, and basically that's like a UI that shows you, okay, how can you kind of build a Knowledge Graph from documents? What the GraphRag package does is it makes that accessible and programmatic for developers. So mm -hmm. I can now have a developer build their own application wow. using those tools. There's a Knowledge Graph pipeline that's involved in that process. Mm -hmm. And so it basically removes a lot of the friction from going from point one, I have these documents or I have this metadata and how do I make that and you know into something that actually works inside of a RAG system. That's very interesting. Any use cases that you would also like to share with the audience? Anything that you've been, you know, obviously seeing the developers are very enthusiastic about GraphRag. I've seen that, uh, you know, when we kind of go out and post uh, about it as well, there's a lot of interest from the developers, but not only just that, also the enterprise leaders kind of are interested in something like this. Uh, so any use case that comes to your mind that you would like to share with the audience? Well, I mean, I think some of what I mentioned earlier yep. around commercial contract search, right. so like taking time out of legal professionals, right, to actually okay. go in and ask questions. A lot of this uh, boils down to different types of knowledge assistance and chatbots. Yeah. Um, so whether that be for customer service, for example, making it easy for people to resolve their problems yep. um, with an external chatbot, or even for internal use, um, I mentioned financial services, but if you have investment banking, mm -hmm. right, or alternative investments where you're looking to connect people to places and things and figure out, well, how do I know who knows who and like, figure out what to invest in next, yeah. um, that's where this sort of technology can A lot of lot regulatory well. industries also kind of play a very important role in this. Yes, and especially as, again, as AI gets more sophisticated, how do you put the proper guardrails around it and make sure it's consistent in its responses, um, and a big part of that is having structured data that backs it, so then you have a clear data model, you can design your framework to say, I only want these types of yeah. organizations yeah. or those types of you know entities to bring back. Okay, I'm also kind of curious to now learn a little about the future, about the updates. Do you want to share a little about you know the upcoming updates on the package? What's planned? 2025 is also around the corner, so kind of wanting to know a little about that too. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we're always expanding on the number of models, so yep. the different LLM providers such as Bedrock, right, that we can leverage inside of the GraphRag package. Um, but another really interesting area that we're looking into is evaluation. Mm. So how do you tell, right, whether or not a RAG model is doing a great job? How do you tell whether or not the data that you created 
um, you know, for your um, grounding database is actually formatted correctly and is the right thing that you need. Mm. So that's an area that we're looking into a lot to help users not only put the application together, but then also figure out, okay, how do I know that this is actually doing a great job? Yeah, that is something which is very important for you know all the enterprise leaders, but also for the developers out there when you're kind of evaluating things. So, yeah. fantastic. Th uh, that's a very good point. Uh, quickly, also wanting to learn a little about you know if folks want to learn about you know more about the Python package, where can they learn about it? I know there are tons of resources that you all share as well. Uh, would you like to share about that? Where can they find it? And I'm pretty sure uh, they can also follow you. So, which is the best platform to follow you? Um, yeah, well, I mean, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm Zach Blumenfeld, you can find me there. But yeah. we also have, for the GraphRack package itself, we have a blog nice. um, that should link to a form of an on-demand webinar, hopefully that put that in there. Yeah. So there's video resources, um, and then a blog that goes into depth. Um, I've also created an in-depth technical example, and nice. there's, that's publicly available in code, so if you're a developer, you just go pull that and you can just get started. Um, replicating that on your own. That's data. awesome. I'm going to share those links with our audience as well, so it just okay. becomes easier for them to navigate. Awesome, yeah. But uh, such a pleasure chatting with you, Zach, on the Robert Show, and uh, great insights that you've shared. We'll keep the conversation continue. Awesome. Right. Great talking Thank to you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.